Okay, so this uh, lecture is about the operational analysis of signal design and we will also go through the warrants uh, which are put by MUTCD for the uh, requirements to put a signal. Okay, so this is the procedure we have to follow. We have already covered some of the steps. Uh, so first of all, we need to gather the input data. Input data will include the volume for each movement, its heavy vehicle proportion, and uh, the peak hour factor. Then we need to know the geometric, uh, geometric con uh, configuration of the intersection, meaning if does it have a median, how many lanes, how many lanes for each direction, the width of the lane, the dimension of the intersection. Okay, and the last thing which we need to gather is the signal timing data for that intersection. Then we need to find out how many movement groups we have and how many lane groups we have. Movement groups are those lanes which have at least one common movement. So they have to go together and you can see the examples over here. And lane groups are those groups uh, which contain lanes with the same capacity and the, uh, the capacity of the lane also depends upon the movements which are happening in that lane so uh, it, it means that when lanes have same movement they have they are in the same lane group and the examples are over here then we need to find out the adjusted saturation flow rate uh, so there is a base value of the saturation flow rate which is written over here otherwise you can calculate the flow rate using saturation headway. After calculating the uh, base saturation flow rate, you will multiply it with uh, as many adjustment factors uh, which are applicable to that lane and that movement. Okay, and we already discussed there's a long list here. Okay, and many of them are covered in these two tables. And whenever you don't have a factor or it is not applicable, you will take it equal to one. Okay, and we, we have covered some of them More, and we did this example as well and this is a solution. Uh, next thing is you have to find out the proportion of arrivals during green time. So it depends upon two things. First of all, uh, what is the spacing between uh, this signal what you have and the other signals which are around it. And the next thing is, are these signals coordinated? So based upon that, they have described the type of movements you have based upon the spacing and the coordination, the type of movements you have. And based upon that, they have defined a platoon ratio, which is RP in this equation. Once you find out RP, then you multiply by, by G by C ratio, where G is effective green time, green time minus the loss time and uh, capital C is the cycle length. So this P will give you the proportion of vehicles arriving during green time. Okay, so basically uh, just to summarize this table, uh, when the signals are very far from each other, then coordination is not applicable. And in that case, the progression will be, uh, you know, very random. Okay, and as the signals keep on getting closer, uh, the uh, you know the the arrival uh, will not be random they will be in groups okay and in that case if the signals are closer but there is no coordination then the progression will be very poor okay so uh, the spacing is higher coordination not applicable and then the progression is random if spacing is uh, less but the coordination is not there, then the, pro the arrival is not random, is in the form of groups, but the progression will not be good because uh, many people will be finding the right time. But if you do coordination with less spacing, then the arrival will be still in groups, but the progression will be better. And then you can see the, uh, the factor is improving, the platoon ratio is improving in that case. Uh, less spacing and coordinated, so then the a platoon ratio improves that means many vehicles will arrive during green time okay then you have to find out the signal phase duration and this is only done for actuated signals why because uh, in pre-timed signals uh, we have 
one fixed timing for each uh, volume okay but in actuated signals the signal itself is recalculating and recalibrating its phase timing based upon the real time traffic data so in that case the, as a programmer or as a designer of the signal you have to fix a duration of the phase so uh, you will design the minimum and the maximum and then you will program the signal to just remain in this range and the signal itself will be calculating the actual time based upon the uh, volume conditions so uh, pre-timed signals and actuated signals in congested conditions so actuated signals may be employing fixed timings when the conditions become uh, congested so in that case signal obviously does not go to any range less than minimum does not go to any value which is less than minimum well, less than maximum sorry less than maximum and pre-timed is fixed okay so in this, those cases you may design or you may come up with a single value or you may see the signal operating on fixed values okay then you find out the volume to capacity ratio so volume to capacity ratio you have the g by c ratio for your movement effective green upon cycle length then you have the saturation flow rate the adjusted saturation flow rate multiplied by the number of lanes you have in that direction or for that movement okay so this will give you the capacity of the signal capacity of the signal for that movement and then you divide the actual flow rate for that movement upon capacity you'll get the x which is the volume to capacity ratio now moving on to the delay which is the last step to finding out uh, the level of service the delay on a signal can be of three types d1 which is known as a uniform delay so uniform delay can be found using this okay equation and in this equation you can see a factor pf which is a progression adjustment factor and progression adjustment factor is coming from here what are these things p is the proportion of vehicles arriving during green we already uh, have seen the equation for that then we have the g by c ratio which we have used earlier as well then we have gamma or the flow ratio which is which you take as um, minimum of one or x multiplied by g by c ratio so x is the volume capacity ratio so volume capacity ratio multiplied by g by c ratio if x is uh, less than one if x is uh, one or more than one then it's just gamma is g by c ratio that's it okay p already explained so this is how you calculate the progression adjustment factor and the rest of the things in this equation are already known then we have the second part of the delay on the signal which is called as the incremental delay incremental delay is the delay which is caused in congested conditions uh, so with each vehicle the delay increases incrementally so delay and the num the flow rate are not uh, linearly interrelated okay it's not like if i increase one vehicle for every vehicle increased I will have an increase in delay of 10 seconds there's, there's nothing like, like this okay so with one vehicle the delay may increase by 20 seconds and the next vehicle may increase the delay by 50 seconds it can happen so incremental delay okay and then we have the initial queue delay which is again because of the congested condition the car is coming there's already queue in front of it now I'm not talking about the queue which you have on the red face I'm talking about a queue which remains even during the green time the so green time finishes but the queue uh, is still there so the green time was not enough so whichever vehicle comes on the intersection there is no situation in which a vehicle comes and there is no delay there is no queue so uh, then we have the initial queue so d2 and d3 are for special cases and uh, we will not go in the details of these they are a bit more complicated not, they are not part of the course so we will just uh, assume that d is d1 and we have uncongested conditions so you calculate the delay from here and then you can find out the level of service using this table okay so uh, if you have d2 and d3 then here you will uh, put the delay or look for the delay which is the total okay so this is not d1 by nature it is d1 plus d2 plus d3 
if you have uncongested condition then we will assume that this is only d1 okay so this is a very simple example to find uniform delay for one through lane with the following characteristics you have cycle length of 90 seconds uh, a green time 40 seconds and uh, the flow rate is given 700 vehicles per hour and uh, uh, the saturation flow rate is adjusted is 1800 vehicles per hour lane the arrival type is 4 okay so uh, let me okay so first of all I will calculate the G by C ratio okay so G by C ratio we have G 40 seconds C 90 seconds so G by C ratio is 0.44 then capacity was number of lanes into a saturation flow rate into G by C ratio so the capacity comes out to be uh, 800 then the uh, next thing we can calculate is uh, the volume to capacity ratio we represented it with x so volume is 700 capacity 800 so x is 0 0.88 the next thing which I need is the proportion of vehicles arriving during green time and I have uh, the arrival type of 4 so let me see uh, the proportion uh, sorry the progression ratio so RP value arrival type 4 means signal uh, uh, signal spacing is in this range and it is coordinated so the RP value is 1.33 so 1.33 multiplied by G by C ratio okay so the progression uh, the, the proportion of vehicles arriving during green comes out to be 0 0.588 now we can uh, go to the equation for delay so we are working on this equation g by c ratio we know cycle length we know pf we have to calculate the pf so for pf first of all i need to find out the gamma okay so my x is i just calculated my x it was uh, 0 0.88 and g by c ratio is 0 0.44 so the gamma is uh, 0 0.85 the x value multiplied by 0 0.44 which is a g by c ratio and this comes out to be 0 0.37 okay now the next thing I need to calculate is the progression adjustment factor we know we already know all these uh, things which are required here uh, let me calculate it okay so I already calculated uh, the progression adjustment factor we knew everything gamma is here uh, this is P which proportion of vehicles arriving during green time and this is uh, the C by G ratio so uh, I believe there is some mistake here let me just uh, recalculate it okay sorry for the earlier mistake these are the correct values so uh, the progression adjustment factor is 0 0.73 uh, p value uh, we already calculated uh, calculated c means uh, cycle length g means the green time we are given and x we calculated 0.85 gamma we just calculated 0.37 and after calculating the progression adjustment factor you calculate the delay delay comes up to be 16.43 seconds per vehicle according to this we have level of service uh, B okay you can see it in this range okay so if you are calculating these values if you get uh, some difference plus minus one difference it could be because of the decimal places so never mind okay moving on uh, this is uh, these are the warrants which are put by MUTCD or given by MUTCD for uh, deciding we should up, if we should put a signal or not so uh, these warrants or the conditions which are given 
they can be divided into three categories they are shell conditions should conditions and may conditions shell conditions are those conditions which require the signal to be there uh, you know when they are fulfilled so it's a, it's a mandatory requirement then should conditions are suggestions and may conditions are uh, conditions in which signal could be uh, providing you better performance but it's not required or it's not uh, recommended okay if it goes out of the budget or there are some other problems you may not provide them okay so shell conditions are must conditions which we are looking to fulfill okay so uh, once we go through the signals it, it, it may not be very easy for us to uh, distinguish between these conditions okay so you just need to go through them as they are presented okay so we have eight warrants okay and uh, many of these warrants or some of these warrants will be reduced if you are doing it for small towns small towns are those which have population less than 10,000 people or if you are doing it for high-speed roads high-speed roads are those which have a speed of more than 35 or in some case 40 miles per hour let us look at the warrants okay this is model number one which depends upon eight hour vehicular volume so you take the volume of eight peak hours of the day okay and there are two conditions which you could satisfy and if you satisfy any one of these conditions a signal is required if you satisfy both of them up to 80 percent then signal is required if you satisfy any one of them up to 70 percent for small towns or high speed roads then the vol then the signal is required okay so you can see these conditions uh, first of all it depends upon how many lanes you have on the major road and the minor road okay and then in condition a we are focusing on uh, total number of vehicles per hour on both uh, on the major street both directions and the second one is a vehicle per hour on the minor street now both are vehicles uh, per hour okay so these are minimum numbers which you must meet in all the eight hours for which you have taken the volume so you have to take in volume for eight, all eight hours and all eight hours the values don't below, go below these numbers then the signal is required okay in all the eight hours so it you know the minimum for the eight hours for example is 6 630 for the major road and it is 190 for the minor road so you meet the minimum okay so a signal is required but if you for in any hour you go below these numbers and signal is not required okay so you have to select the row and then you have you will uh, look at the look at uh, the values which you should meet okay condition b again you need the the same two things okay but now uh, the values are changed because in this they were saying the condition a is based upon total volume so total volume from major and minor road goes up to so much uh, that you need a signal but in condition b they are saying okay the volume on minor road is very low but the volume on major road is so high that minor road will not get a chance without a signal to move okay so to avoid that uh, we need a signal so condition a focuses on serving the total volume while condition b focuses on serving or just maintaining the minimum flow on the minor road okay then can warrant b warrant 2 is for four hour volumes so it's it is made slightly easier for us so instead of looking at four hours you are looking at sorry instead of looking at eight hours which we did for warrant one you are looking at four hours and the good thing here is that we already have graphs so based upon the number of lanes we have we will select our curve and we will plot the volumes on this graph okay so major street total both directions on the x-axis and minor uh, uh, you know uh, the, the the high volume approach volume for the minor road on the on the y-axis okay so on the major axis sorry on the x-axis we are plotting the total on the uh, y-axis we are plotting only one side volume for the minor road the side which has higher than the other simple the side which has higher than the other okay that is the major side for that so if you plot the point x and y and your point goes below your curve so for example you add one lane in one lane in both roads so this is your curve so if your plotted point is below this curve 
signal not required if it is above then signal is required okay so this graph is for you can see small towns and high speed and this graph is for normal conditions okay so you have to see your condition you have to check the number of lanes based upon that you will select the graph and the curve in that graph this is the peak hour volume the same type of graphs we have the total major street high volume for the minor street approach and this is the curve for normal condition this is the curve for a small towns okay so you select the, the graph which is applicable select the curve which is applicable and then you look where your point is being plotted if it is below the curve signal not required if it is on the curve or above the curve signal is required okay uh, mine uh, peak hour uh, warrant which is warrant three has some additional conditions as well okay if you don't meet the curve so your point is below the curve then you may check these conditions as well okay so uh, the need for a signal can be considered so this is a shell condition if all three of the following are meeting so either you meet the graph or you meet all three of them what are what are these three first of all the first condition is about delay so the delay for the minor street in the peak hour uh, goes more than four vehicle hours with a one lane approach or more than five vehicle hours for a two, two lane approach in that case a signal is required no, then in that case you will look for the other condition the other condition is in the same hour which you are calling as a peak hour the uh, volume of one direction exceeds 100 vehicles per hour with one lane and 150 vehicles per hour for two lanes okay if you meet this one and this one then you look for the third one and third one is the total entering volume during the peak hour for the intersection okay is 650 for intersection with three approaches which is a t intersection something like this now if it's a four leg intersection then the total is 800 okay so if you meet all these three conditions signal is required so this is part b of warrant number three okay warrant three uh, MUC, MUTCD also says that if you are providing uh, if you are looking for peak hour conditions should be checked for industrial areas commercial areas because these areas have peak timings and uh, for uh, after those timings the, the signal is or the intersection is normally uh, like almost empty so in that case you uh, you know you don't have to worry about uh, uh, about the signal okay so in these uh, areas you should check uh, the peak hour don't rely on eight hour or four hour because they have peak hour and the traffic is uh, there in the peak hour after the peak hour the traffic becomes very very low and another thing another recommendation is if you are going for the peak hour volume then you should provide an actuated signal because otherwise after the peak hour when the traffic becomes very very low uh, you will cause unnecessary delay for low traffic conditions so the actuated signal is recommended here then we have four hour pedestrian warrant okay again we have a graph so in this graph obviously we are talking about pedestrians so the the y-axis is different instead of uh, plotting the uh, volume of the minor street we are plotting the pedestrians who are crossing the major street so if this is your major street okay then the pedestrians who are crossing in this direction okay so find out the uh, four hour pedestrian volume and again you will just plot the numbers which are minimum for these four hours even if the minimum is below the curve uh, 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 if, if the minimum goes below the curve that means uh, pedestrian warrant is not satisfied but if the minimum is on the curve or above the curve that means the pedestrian warrant is satisfied so you will not you can plot all the four values and see if any value goes below the curve so you have four hours right for each hour you have a total of the major, major street and a pedestrian volume which is crossing the major street so if any of the four points goes below the curve you have you don't have the pedestrian warrant uh, satisfied so this is the curve for normal criteria and this is the curve for small towns or high speed routes okay uh, then this is a pedestrian peak hour volume uh, okay so you can also check only the peak hour as well so this is for four hour and this is for peak hour so pedestrian warrant again has two parts so the y-axis x-axis are the same you have to look for the curve okay 
uh, if you meet the four hour uh, criteria or the one hour criteria you provide a signal and if you are providing a signal because of the pedestrian warrant then you should provide it with a push button so in the hours where there is no pedestrian crossing you don't cause unnecessary delay okay the other uh, restriction or the other recommendation is that a 20 feet of side distance should be available on both sides of the signal so the pedestrians can see the vehicles coming uh, it should not be applied uh, when the uh, the other intersection which has a signal is 300 feet or less from your existing or from this intersection which is under consideration because in that case if there's already a signal after 300 feet the pedestrian should go there and cross the signal from there okay instead of proponing another signal for them okay so you don't consider the pedestrian because we don't want to encourage them to cross from any way okay and this warrant can be reduced up to 50 percent the 15 percentile speed of the pedestrians okay obviously 3.5 miles per hour cannot be the speed of the vehicles so we are talking about a 15 percent of 15 percent uh, 15th percentile of the pedestrian speed uh, is three less than 3.5 miles per hour then even if you are somewhere halfway between the axis and the curve okay so you are not on the curve you are not above the curve but you are below the curve but you are almost uh, or less than halfway between the curve and the line so you meet 50 percent of the warrant okay so you can see here so for example this is this requires 200 right okay so if you meet this criteria 15 percentile speed less than 3.5 miles per hour so even if uh, you don't meet 200 but you meet 100 that's enough okay going up to 100 is enough okay then we have a warrant for for a school crossing it is similar to pedestrians you can check the same graphs uh, you may apply it at mid block locations as well in order to decide whether we should put a pedestrian signal or not obviously mid block locations you do not require a vehicle signal so but there is a school crossing you want to see if this is school crossing uh, requires a signal or not so you may apply this warrant there as well uh, you have to study the available gaps gaps between the crossing traffic okay so uh, the gap is the gap between the crossing traffic and they are saying the frequency of acceptable gaps uh, should not be less than one for each minute so uh, in every minute the students should find enough gap to cross uh, the, the road okay if it is less than that then the signal is required obviously because uh, they will be waiting for longer times then uh, and one gap uh, or the crossing time includes the uh, you know uh, the crossing time itself the gap should be enough for the crossing time the buffer time you know like a half a second or one second of safety factor of safety and the allowance for groups of students because you know groups move slower than individual uh, crossing people even if they are kids so kids in groups are slower than individual kids anybody who has kids he has a very good experience of that or, or should i should i say it's a, uh, it's not so a pleasant experience when you are trying to drag your kid to the school okay and they are not uh, you know they are not a, a, in a hurry as much as you for some reason okay so the gap should be this much if you're not finding this much gap every minute then uh, then the signal is required and how to uh, find out these numbers how, how much is this time the crossing time and the buffer time and the crossing in groups uh, uh, margin you have to do some studies for that uh, but school crossing signals are very rare because uh, usually kids don't follow you know don't follow the the signal you know they are they are, they are uh, very impatient you know that okay uh, warrant number six is for coordinated signals okay or coordinated signal system if you meet any of these two criteria you should be pro providing a signal and uh, these criteria are applied uh, such that the signal spacing should not become less than 1000 feet so you already have two signals before and after and you're going to put a signal in between them at your intersection but if putting a signal makes the spacing less than 1000 feet then you will not go for that 
okay so you have a one way street the, the first condition is you have a one way street or the street which has a very high volume in one direction and the adjacent traffic signals are so far apart they do not provide enough enough degree of platooning okay so providing a signal at this location will increase the progression of vehicles from one signal to the other signal it will uh, uh, de-randomize or make the randomized le uh, randomization of vehicles less in terms of their arrival then you should go for this one and the second condition is very similar to that but instead of uh, one way street they are saying two way street okay and uh, the, the reason is same you have two signals already but the progression is very poor so you want to provide a signal in between them so to make the progression uh, better then we have crash experience so in terms of crash experience we already discussed some warrants earlier so you have to keep in mind uh, when we are applying the, the the crash criteria for any type of traffic control device on the intersections you have to uh, keep in mind the crashes on which you are applying the criteria are those which are supposed to reduce because of the traffic control device so right turning crashes right angle crashes turning crashes head on crashes okay crashes which happen at the intersection itself okay not rear end crashes or side swipe crashes they have nothing to do with the control device okay so the first condition is you have to meet you know uh, all three conditions for the crash experience uh, so first of all you already tried some other control devices and still you have a very we have very low very high crash frequency one of the cases one of the conditions and you have five or more of those crashes which belong to the use of control device or which are happening at the intersection so five or more in a 12 month period which is very high so in that case uh, you a signal can be uh, required and uh, and then this the third condition is related to the uh, uh, related to one number one so you applied previous devices didn't work you have five year crashes uh, uh, you know more, you have one year crashes more than five or more okay and uh, uh, these crashes can be reduced with a traffic control device and you are also meeting 80 percent of uh, condition A and condition B of warrant 1 okay so just to show you warrant 1 again so they are saying you are meeting this column of condition A and B both okay both one is not sufficient okay so for crash experience we have to look at the previous experience of crash uh, control devices you have to see the crash data of the at least one past one year and you have to also see that you are meeting 80 percent of condition a and condition b of the warrant one okay or you are meeting the uh, pedestrian traffic uh, or the pedestrian warrant up to 80 percent okay so you are meeting warrant uh, one 80 percent full both conditions or you are meeting pedestrian warrant 80 percent okay so you meet these two and uh, warrant one or the pedestrian warrant i forgot the number uh, but up to 80 percent then in that case uh, a signal can be required okay then we have the road network uh, warrant okay uh, which is if you meet one of these conditions okay at the intersection of two or major routes okay what is the major route i will just explain later and uh, okay and if you have just one major route then you will look for one of these conditions so if you have two major roads which are intersecting then the volume uh, entering volume is at least 1000 vehicles per hour for the peak hour and it is projected that it will meet uh, warrant one two or three in the next five years so right now it is not less than 1000 and in the future it will meet warrant uh, 1, 2 or 3 uh, you know in the 5 years okay next 5 years or it has uh, uh, less than 1000 uh, it does not have less than 1000 vehicles per hour and uh, it is uh, for, for 5 hours of a non-normal business day Saturday or Sunday 
okay so either you have this or this okay this is for normal peak hour and this is if you are maintaining uh, more than 1000 vehicles per hour on non normal business uh, day which is saturday and sunday for 5 hours okay so if you meet any of these conditions on intersection of two major routes you provide a signal if it is just one major route intersecting a minor route then you can uh, provide a signal if you are meeting one of these conditions when this major route is a part of a street or highway system that is a principal road network okay or it is a part of rural or suburban highways outside the entering or uh, either they are outside the city or entering the city or they are going through the city okay or it appears as a major route for an official plan for future so right now it's not a major route but in future it will become a major route and it is it will become a very important part of the road network so you can see these three conditions are based upon engineering judgment these are there are no numbers here okay so somebody a planner has to judge whether these conditions are met or not then this one is for uh, railway crossing if you have a railway crossing near your intersection so it is better that i show you the one in terms of the the graphs okay so you have first of all the distance d which is the distance from the stop line of the minor street to the railway crossing so railway crossing will not be obviously on the intersection because then there will be no road crossing and it should be uh, logically on the minor road so what is the distance between the the crossing and the stop line we call it distance d okay so first of all find out the d okay and then plot the points major street total of both approaches per hour and minor street uh, uh, crossing approach okay this one this the the approach which will cross and uh, reach the signal okay and then you plot the points again the criteria is same if you reach uh, the curve or you go above the curve signal is required other way otherwise not required so this graph is for one lane approach you can see one lane here and one lane here and this graph when you have two lanes on the minor road okay so you you can see we are focused on the minor road because logically the crossing should be at the minor road okay so you can see here the same things are written here uh, so the graph belongs to the second condition the graph which i showed you has to satisfy the second condition the first condition says that the crossing and the stop line are within 140 feet so the d should not be less than uh, should not be more than 140 feet if it is more than 140 feet don't check for this warrant simple okay so first condition the distance d should not be more than 140 feet and then you can uh, look for these graphs okay uh, the minor street approach can be adjusted volume can be adjusted by multiplying it with one of these three factors or all these three factors whichever applies how much is the train volume the presence of high occupancy vehicles including buses and adjustment for the presence of trucks so the graphs which I showed you are for base conditions when uh, the factors are one all these factors are one so these are the base conditions if you don't meet them then you find out the factor from here for each condition multiply with the volume and then use the graph okay so if you don't meet the base condition multiply with the volume and then use the graph okay so there's an example which I would like to solve in the class so that we can refresh these rules which we are which I have just mentioned.